Hello everybody, this is Isaac Weisop from IlluminatiWatcher.com. Today I'm going to be experimenting with a multimedia production here. This will be an analysis of something that I find important and very interesting. So I'm going to make a combination. I'm going to have a post on IlluminatiWatcher.com. I'm going to include this on the podcast. And I am also going to make a YouTube video. Now all three are going to have pretty much the same information, but the website is where you can go for more deeper uh, like references and re resources and such for some of the things I'll be talking about. Now what I want to talk about is Lady Gaga. She has been a part of what they call this emotion revolution. It was a study done at Yale. And at first I heard it, and it sounded to me like she was waking up to the agenda. The language and the things she was saying seemed to support the idea that she's breaking free from the stranglehold of the Illuminati who control the music industry and all the entertainment in general. However, when I started researching a little bit further, I found more complexities in there. There's a lot of involvement with Facebook which many of you know, and I'll talk about later, there's this whole agenda for the transhumanism movement that they've been a part of, allegedly. So what I want to do is I will first talk a little bit about this emotion revolution, some of the ideas behind it, and then I'm going to actually put in some actual footage and audio, depending on which format you're listening to this, where you can hear what she was saying, and then I'll kind of go through an analysis of what I heard and so on. So let's start with the emotion revolution. What is this? It was a study done where people were getting, were researching students to see how they felt about school. It was a, a noble idea. It was looking at the mental health of students and trying to make people more aware of their emotional intelligence and the social media, how that plays in with everything. Now, at first, this sounded like a great idea, and in fact, as I was listening to the convention about it, I thought it was great. There was actually some great inspiration, particularly from Lady Gaga's interview, which we'll go into later. But then I looked at some of the symbolism behind it. If you look at the symbol for the Emotion Revolution, you'll see there is the classic Illuminati sign of the all-seeing eye. Why is that there? Does that mean the Illuminati is behind this? Is there an occult basis for this? And Lady Gaga has been dragged into it and she's fighting it? I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff to navigate here and we'll, we'll unravel it as we go along. But what's of more concern was when I found out Facebook was involved. Because on Yale's website, you can see who the... It says, the emotion revolution was made possible by the generous support of Facebook, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Microsoft, Mattel, Life is Good, Hope Lab, WWE, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation, the Flawless Foundation, and the Foz Foundation. Now, the, the one that concerns me the most is Facebook. That's number one on the list. How do you think they got to number one on the list? Probably because they donated the most. I don't have any facts to back that up. It might be out there. I don't know. But they're first in line there. Suggesting they're behind most of the effort behind this. Which wouldn't be of concern if they hadn't had that history of manipulating news feeds in order to see how it, people reacted emotionally. I don't know if you remember, but in 2012, there was an experiment done on Facebook users, almost a million users, where Facebook was tracking their newsfeed and putting certain stories on there to see how they would react. For, for example, they were putting negative stories on these people's news feeds and seeing how they responded to it. And they found that there was an emotional contagion that happened between people, meaning... What one person feels can be felt and placed upon another. While this seems somewhat logical, there are other things to consider when you look into the history of the occult. Not only do we have aspects of mind control with the MK Ultra experiments, but there's also this contagion magic concept. 
It's something I talked about in the past. I talked about it primarily in Sacrifice Magic Behind the Mic. That's a book I wrote about hip-hop conspiracies and the occult. Well, this contagion magic is done the same way as what they call the emotional contagion in this study. Most people were upset because they found Facebook was manipulating their data and what they saw. But the fact of the matter is, Facebook can do that. It's their company. It's their website. They don't owe you anything. So why wouldn't they do it? They're in it to make money. And they want to get inside your head and figure out how to do it better. In fact, just recently in July of 2015, the CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, talked about using telepathy. And I quote, he says, One day, I believe we'll be able to send full, rich thoughts to each other directly using technology. You'll be able to think of something and your friends will immediately be able to experience it too if you'd like. This would be the ultimate communication technology. So what is this? This is more of the occult transhumanism push where technology puts us in a digital matrix world. This is a very complex subject. I've written about it a couple times. If you've read my first book, A Grand Unified Conspiracy Theory, I kind of introduced the topic. And then more recently, I talked about it in the Transhuman and Occult Apocalypse, how Google will solve the problem of humanity. But you'll notice Facebook bought the virtual reality gear called Oculus. And to me, it seems like it all points to one direction. Facebook is pushing us into this digital matrix, which I predicted back when I wrote my first book. I talked directly about Facebook being the proprietors of the digital matrix which they want to put us into. So that's like a brief overview of what this emotion revolution is. So I want you to take a listen. I'm going to play one clip of Lady Gaga answering a question, come back, talk to you a little bit about it, play another short clip, talk about it, and so on. So here we go. emotional and social intelligence to reach those goals of a kinder and braver world? And when did it happen for you? Was it a process? Was it a moment? A kinder and braver world. Well, I guess, you know, we're still working on that, right? <laughs> That's a very nice way of putting it. Could you ask me that question again? Yes, I guess I want to know how how you use emotional and social intelligence to try to get to those goals. Okay. Why is it a, a key prism to look okay. at? Okay, so this is how I do it. I have um, some sort of anxiety, depression, something that's changed my whole life. I, uh, I take antidepressant medication for it. I have tried to get off of it. My doctor always tells me not to, that it's not safe for me to. Whenever I've tried to, I've gotten very uh, neurotic, manic, sick. Uh, so I have had to study all different types of ways. Uh, but I was thinking to myself, why is it that I have to dig into all these different areas to figure out how to function? Why don't, like, there's no way that I have at my fingertips as a, you know, public figure, uh, it's not, it's no, not possible that I have the resources uh, that other kids have. So this is not fair. Uh, I started looking into Ayurvedic medicine. I started looking into uh, mindfulness and meditation. I started uh, looking into a mantra. I do acupuncture. I do cupping. I, uh, I uh, pray sometimes. I uh, make music. I write poetry. I, I'm an actress now. That's helped me a lot. Uh, um, but so these are the things that uh, I, I started to do. But what uh, helped me the most that I want to impress upon all of you is that I realize that part of my identity is saying no to things I don't want to do. And you are all in school, and you all have a lot of teachers and a lot of people around you that tell you all day what you have to do, but it is your right to choose what you do and don't do. It is your right to choose what you believe in and what you don't believe in. It is your right to curate your life and your own perspective. You are not here to be a puppet for Yale. That's not what they want. Am I wrong? <laughs> That's not what they want. What they want, I believe, is a thoroughbred kind of passion. And that comes from an extreme amount of integrity and knowing who you are. And I have had to make decisions like, why am I unhappy? Okay, okay, 
Stephanie Gaga hybrid person. <laughs> Why are you unhappy? Why is it that you want to quit music a couple years ago? I was like, well, I really don't like selling these, you know, uh, fragrances, perfumes. I don't like uh, wasting my time spending days just shaking people's hands and smiling and taking selfies. It feels shallow to my existence. I have a lot more to offer than my image. I don't like being used to make people money. I uh, feel s sad when uh, I'm overworked and that I've just become a money-making machine and that my passion and my creativity take a back seat. That makes me unhappy. So what did I do? I started to say no. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I'm not taking that picture. I'm not going to that event. I'm not standing by that because that's not what I stand for. And slowly but surely, I remembered who I am. And then you go home and you look in the mirror and you're like, yes, I can go to bed with you every night. Because that person, I know that person. That person has balls. That person has integrity. That person has an opinion. That person does, doesn't say yes. That person doesn't get a text from somebody and say, oh my god, they wrote this and um, they sent this emoji. Should I write this back? What do you think? Is that okay to say? Are they going to like me if I say that? Should I say something different? This is the, this is the age that we live in. We're not actually communicating with each other. We are unconsciously communicating lies. I want to explode that today and break that with all of you as much as possible. And um, hello. <laughs> uh, and 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 that's and so that's where that's. What I would say, so my, my long answer to that question is that I check in with myself throughout the day. And I say, do I really want to do this? And if the answer is no, I don't do it. And you shouldn't either. All right, so you listen to the interview. You'll notice right off the bat, they ask her about this kinder, braver world. Have you heard that phrase before? Yes, you have. From Brave New World, which is Aldous Huxley tied into the Fabian Society, more Illuminati agenda stuff. He wrote the book about it, and it, the whole book is about the future of humanity and the psychological manipulation and conditioning the minds of these slaves, which, again, I argue is part of the transhumanism movement. Gaga also talked about how she was on antidepressants, and her doctor would not allow her to stop taking them. Why is that? That seems very concerning. That he wouldn't let her get off of those. Is he a handler? Is this just part of the big pharma agenda? It could be both of those. But she also talked about how instead of kicking the antidepressants, or maybe to supplement them, she treats her anxieties and depression with different things. She, list, she lists Ayurvedic medicine, meditation, mantras, and praying. Now, if you want to be kind of paranoid about it, which we love to do. Of course, we're going to do that. We're going to look at the occult meanings behind these things. When you look at the left-hand pathers of the ancient Hindu Indian religion, they used to try to make contact with these entities in order to learn the secrets of the Ayurvedic medicines. The same principle goes for meditation. When you look at yoga, which our friend Alistair Crowley used to practice, the ultimate end game is to make contact with these entities from another dimension, these other spirits. And the same concept plays into the mantra. Now, she mentions the prayer, and we can probably assume it's a Christian prayer, but what if it's not? A couple years ago, she had an art exhibit at the Lou, and she provided a prayer, I called it the satanic prayer, because she was talking about really dark stuff. Now you couple that with all of the stuff I just talked about and you gotta wonder, is she making contact with spirits from another dimension? Are these spirits demons? That's the problem with these practices. You don't know who you're making contact with. You're not that in tune with the spirit world. I mean, some people might be, but most of us are not. So when you start dabbling into these things, you're making contact with these entities that you don't know if they're good or evil. So that's where the problem lies. Gaga goes on and talks about how the part of her identity is to now try to say no to things that are asked of her. 
She tells the kids they are not puppets for Yale. Well, I shouldn't call them kids. Adults. They're not puppets for the university. So what does that mean? That means she has been a part of this agenda and been used as a puppet herself. And to support that, she goes into how she didn't want to really sell the perfume. Now, she just glosses over it, and that's all she said. And most people probably haven't looked further into it. But I already studied this whole thing. There was this fragrance she had called Fame, and it was based on the molecular structure of blood and semen. Now, while that sounds taboo and racy and just part of Lady Gaga's act, the truth of the matter is the occult, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, they use these body fluids in magic rituals. Aleister Crowley created the top three layers of initiation ritual of the OTO, and guess what those things use? They use these bodily fluids in order to progress higher through the initiations to become more enlightened. If this all sounds wild, you really got to read my book, Sacrifice Magic Behind the Mic, because I, I go into more of the history behind it and kind of easy into it. I'm just kind of throwing it at you. Most people are probably dismissing it and thinking it's kind of crazy stuff, but I assure you it is not. So she was led to do this perfume line called Fame. And I talked about the occult importance of that stuff. And now she's coming out and saying that she didn't even want to do that. Well, what was so, what's so wrong with having a perfume line? That was the first thing she said when she listed the things that she wanted to say no to. Is there anything that wrong with having a perfume line? There is if you're using the blood and semen in a magic ritual sense. And I believe she's aware of that. All of this ties into the contagion magic that we talked about earlier. The contagion emotion experiment by Facebook. Left Eye Lopez from TLC. Most people don't realize she could have very well been sacrificed via contagion magic. Her last few days, which were recorded for a documentary, they show how the van she was in accidentally killed a young boy whose last name was also Lopez. She kept the shoes and she talked about how the spirit was following her and was supposed to kill her. And then the next day, she dies. That's contagion magic. She felt it. She felt the spirit attached from the boy to her, and she knew it was going to happen. Getting back to Lady Gaga. She talks about how she was used to make money. She's been a machine for making money. And this just goes right along with the whole idea that we've been talking about, where the music industry, the entertainment industry, they use these artists to make the money and then throw them aside as an afterthought. Her album called Art Pop was held by everyone as this terrible album and it flopped. But the truth of the matter is it sold millions of dollars worth of copies and it was actually kind of successful. And I actually, I own the album. It's pretty good. I don't think it's as good as their first one, but you know, it's pretty good. I don't think it's bad. But if you looked at the reviews of it, everyone was trashing on it. And I remember reading these reviews thinking, well, geez, it's not that bad. What do they expect? You know, you can't repeat the, the first album. The first album is usually the best one. But it made me wonder. I always wondered since then. I thought, why is everyone writing her so hard about this album? Well, it's because she started to turn on the industry. I believe. Because allegedly the way this whole thing works is artists like Beyonce and Lady Gaga and Katy Perry, supposedly they're used in different occult rituals to evoke the spirit of the goddess. It's this archetypal spirit of, you know, Athena, Minerva, Diana, all these pagan gods or goddesses, I should say. They're evoking these spirits and using them as inspiration for their art. And at some point, Lady Gaga lost contact of this goddess. And that's when the music industry moved on. And in a Kill King ritual, they have to build her up and then destroy her. You'll notice that's a repetitive theme you see with many artists and celebrities. We build them up and then we have to destroy them. We kill them to let the next one take over. 
So in the interview, she keeps going. She says there's an unconscious communication of lies that's happening in this modern age of communication. I've been talking about this for years, this symbolism. People want to joke and laugh at these ideas that the triangle or the 666 hand or the all-seeing eye doesn't mean anything, but it really does. It pushes symbolism into the subconscious where it comes out in ways that you don't even know about. On IlluminatiWatcher.com, I've got a slew of articles called the Decoding Illuminati Symbolism Series, and I talk about all of these symbols and how the history of them and how they could be affecting us. So Gaga goes in on the Illuminati, the messages, them forcing her to do things she didn't want to do, and how she's breaking free from it. I argue she's starting to wake up and this is her trying to reveal the agenda without being too obvious about it. So let's get into the second video clip I want to talk about. Here we go. Or what if, you know, we all just told Twitter that they had to have a standard of morality? Yeah. What if we told... Um, you know, all these major corporations, from an artist's mouth, I am telling you that freedom of speech is overrated. Okay? What you choose to do with your voice in this world is extremely powerful. We have seen throughout history how dangerous it can be to use your voice for evil. Now we all have a platform. But what really scares me is these massive corporations that just have no standards for values at all. It's not my problem, it's your problem. But I'll take your money and we'll go public. Is that what we're gonna do? Is that what we stand for as a generation? Oh, it's, it's fine because I still get to post my pictures? Who cares? Nobody's gonna remember what you tweeted, but you will never forget all that hateful shit that you read every single day that made you sick at school, that made it and, and hard for you to read, that made it hard for you to understand, that made it hard for you to focus, get a boyfriend, make a friend, be able to have sex. There's like, I couldn't even tell you the number of things that depression and anxiety did for me growing up. All the problems, all the things I didn't even know were actually wrong with me until I realized I was missing out on so much. We have to take a stand against all of this, and it's gonna require being really strong and setting an example. And when you get those jobs, all you Yaleys, <laughs> when you get those jobs, do me a favor and tell the presidents of these social media companies that they are ruining culture all right so you can see that lady gaga is trying to raise her voice about these corporations she calls out twitter but she could have easily called out facebook but facebook was the primary donor to this whole study i feel like she's trying to speak out against these people she's like infiltrated the illuminati and now she's on the inside now she's going to speak out against them that's kind of what it seems like to me. She talks about how these corporations have no standard for values and they just put whatever they want out there and they'll take your money. They don't really care. They put it on the, the onus on the viewer. They're saying, well, if you're paying for this crap, we'll keep giving it to you. And to me, it's all part of this like age of nihilism and this satanic culture that we're in. If people want to spend more money on Halloween decorations than Christmas decorations, they're going to make it. They'll make it happen for you. But they use the entertainment as a way of swaying that opinion and swaying our preferences. She talks about how these corporations take advantage of us, but we're okay with it because we say, hey, that's fine. I can upload my, my photos on the, uh, the Twitter, which she really means Facebook, I think. Because that's what people primarily share photos on is Facebook or Instagram. But the fact of the matter is, as long as you consent to allowing that to happen, it will happen. Facebook doesn't care that there's a small fringe group of people that really care about privacy rights. 
because they know they have the large share of people that are on Facebook and continue to connect with each other using it. So it's kind of a catch-22. You can unplug from Facebook, but now you have to rely on previous means for staying in contact with your friends and family. There's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, I'm on Facebook. I'm not trying to be a hypocrite about the thing. I'm just saying it's a argument out there and I think Lady Gaga is aware of some kind of end game and she's afraid to say something. So let's get into a final quick little clip. This is more, I don't want to say it's humorous, but I found it interesting and curious the choice of words that this person uses. They, they pull some of the students on stage for a Q&A and you can hear some of the influences of the occult entertainment industry being used by this one person i'll just let you listen to it and then we'll come back well i think that there's a very very powerful um background and message about storytelling and it's only powerful if you care about your own story you know it's one thing to have a story and not share it with anyone but then you're not serving any purpose you know, and I think that finding where you come from, finding who you are, taking that time to yourself and becoming a full blown alchemist, turning negative experiences into experiences of golden opportunity and making that your life. You know, you have the power to change your life. And I think that just going to school on Monday, it would be fake of me to say I'm going to go around and support everyone because unfortunately, that's not the world that we live in. But I know that I can take some time to myself and still figure out my story and encourage someone else yes. to be an alchemist. Yes. All right, so there it was. Did you hear it? Did you catch it? The girl references the alchemist. And Lady Gaga agrees with her. Most of you know, I already wrote a book. That was my most recent book. It's called The Desert Enigma, an analysis of occult symbolism in Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. It's a very important read because this stuff is so covert and hidden, you wouldn't believe that the author is tying it into Satanism, Aleister Crowley, and all of this other hidden occult messages. I read The Alchemist book a couple times. It was very uplifting, very good book. But when I started researching and unraveling this whole agenda, I learned more about the real meaning behind the book. And in The Desert Enigma, I explain the whole thing and break it down. You can pick it up on Amazon, iTunes, primarily on IlluminatiWatcher.com, which is a place you'll be able to donate, pay what you want for this book. You don't have the money to pay for it? Just download the damn thing. Put zero dollars in on the field and it'll download it through my Gumroad store. I just want you to read it. I don't care if you pay nothing, pay me a dollar. I don't really care. I just want you to read it and become educated, become aware of the agenda. Because it truly is a spiritual battle. They're genuinely pushing us. Besides, Yale is the home of the Skull and Bones Secret Society. So are you really surprised? Thanks for listening. Be sure to sign up for my free email newsletter. It's on IlluminatiWatcher.com. I walk you through the entire archive of the whole agenda, and I break it down and provide you examples. Thanks for listening.